to Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created the magnificent Jose that is America. Radio Beacon to Radio Beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. Oh, the day that we've all been waiting for. The prosecution of Don J. Trump. The Don. Uh, the impeachment managers for the House uh, have 16 hours. They had started about noon today. Uh, and what they've done so far is go through a very long, long, long period of time and create a timeline, a timeline that begins in earnest in the spring when Donald Trump realizes that he is 15 points behind Joe Biden and that he is likely to lose and starts to prime the pump and the people who are loyal to him into believing that the only way he could lose is if it was stolen from them. He lies and lies and lies throughout the spring and the summer and the fall of, 2020, of, of 2020 so that he can agitate them and anger them and cultivate them and prime them for violence. And each time they do something violent, Donald Trump gets on Twitter and praises them. For instance, now we're listening to Stacey Plaskett. Stacey Plaskett is an impeachment manager, obviously. She is a delegate from the U.S. Virgin Islands and a very accomplished attorney in her own right. She is actually talking about the time when uh, the Biden-Harris campaign was in Texas. Remember that? And the Biden-Harris campaign were on their buses, and they were stalked on the road by Trump loyalists with flags of flying in their Ford F-150s and, you know, vehicles, trying to run that bus full of young staffers, volunteers for the campaign, trying to kill them, trying to run them off the road. Donald Trump's response to that was to tweet out a video of it and say he loves Texas. And then when Texas announces that it is going to start an investigation into the lawlessness and the attempted murder of these young staffers in the Biden-Harris bus, Donald Trump tweets that he doesn't think they did anything wrong. So this is a long priming of the pump. This is a long cultivation. This is a long effort by Donald Trump to stay in power using his private army of Trump loyalists. That is what is being explained today, and it's compelling. And how the Republicans in the Senate can look away, which I understand they are looking away. I understand they're reading briefing books and their comic books and novels and anything but listening to this evidence, which is sick and sad, considering that there are an enormous number of them who not only stayed silent in the face of all of this occurring in front of their own faces because Donald Trump did this in public. Donald Trump did this on social media. Donald Trump did this on national television. Donald Trump refused to accept a peaceful transfer of power as as an idea that he would uh, actually subscribe to, right? And during the siege of the Capitol, we now know that Donald Trump called Mike Lee, the senator from Utah, he thought he was calling Tommy Tuberville, but he was really calling Mike Lee. He somehow got the numbers wrong and asked Mike Lee, thinking it was Tuberville, to not certify the electoral uh, college votes, not certify certain slates of votes, while they were being attacked. That was at 2.11 in the afternoon. At 2.24 during the siege, Donald Trump tweets that Mike Pence is a coward, Kevin McCarthy is in the White House watching the president watch it on TV, and he calls Jared. Apparently, Lindsey Graham called Ivanka. Please ask your father, we're begging, just ask him to stop it. Tell them to stop. Call his mob off. So these senators that refuse to listen to the evidence are actually part of it, part of the evidence.
Will they be called as witnesses? I don't know. But let's listen to Stacey Plaskett uh, talking about what happened on January 6th. This cannot simply be a protest. It has to be the establishment of the MAGA militia with the command offices set up, with all further militia tactical missions spreading from there. Another user said in response, quote, we will have to achieve an actual tactical victory, like storming and occupying the Capitol, to have the intended effect. That's what they understood Donald Trump to want. There it is in black and white. And they explained why they felt justified in this. Another poster on the forum, the Donald.win, wrote on January 4th, quote, if Congress illegally certifies Biden, Trump would have absolutely no choice but to demand us to storm Congress and kill slash beat them up. Donald Trump will have no choice. That was what he made them believe. To the point his supporters felt justified even in carrying weapons and storming our capital. This was in post after post. Here's another. When discussing how to carry guns into DC, one noted, quote, yes, it's illegal, but this is war. And we are clearly in a post-legal phase of our society. What? They treated it as a war, and they meant it. The morning of the attack, under the thread, today I told my kids goodbye, one poster wrote, Today I had the very difficult conversation with my children that daddy might not come home from D.C. Within a matter of hours, that post amassed 4,000 likes. President Trump had truly made them believe that their election had been stolen and that it was their patriotic duty to fight to steal it back. Patriotic, a term he gave those who use violence for him and they were willing to say goodbye to their children for this fight. And their supporters didn't just rely on entering the Capitol with guns haphazardly. They had maps of this building. They talked through which tunnels to use and how to get to the Senate chamber. Some posted specific floor plans, layouts of the Capitol, alongside hopes of overwhelming law enforcement to, quote, find the tunnels arrest the worst traitors. Posters also fixated on what they saw as their ability to easily overwhelm the Capitol Police as, quote, there are only around 2,000 of them. And again, they urge, quote, the Capitol is our goal. Everything else is a distraction. There were hundreds of these posts, hundreds, monitored by the Trump administration. And these posts, they were chillingly accurate. Right down to communication devices. A new affidavit filed by the FBI described preparations by the right-wing group, the Proud Boys, to storm the Capitol, including using earpieces and walkie-talkies to direct movements throughout the building. This happened. That's the level of planning in advance that occurred. They had earpieces. On the slide, you'll see Proud Boy member Dominic Pizzola has an earpiece in his right ear, consistent with the affidavit. And in addition to these detailed posts, they made clear why they thought they should do this, why they thought they could do this. It wasn't just that they were doing it to following the president's orders. They thought he would help them. A third-party site captured a post on the Donald.win again, the site monitored by Trump's team, and he wrote, and wrote, quote, he, meaning Donald Trump in this instance, can order the Nat Guard to stand down if needed. Oh, my God. So, um, obviously, Donald Trump's administration was monitoring all of this communication and was in it, in it and was very excited to see his supporters, his loyalists, fight, physically fight for him.
RandyRhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.